Hello, this is Liz. Welcome to my little urban homestead. Uh, it's unboxing day today. I've been learning uh, a lot about probiotics and things like that, which are very good, healthy things for you. And uh, I, I also heard from a Mimo mention um, kombucha. I've looked in, in several shops and even asked in some, and they haven't even heard of it. I went on uh, eBay and bought a SCOBY, which stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, something like that anyway, uh, so that I can actually make it at home. And so I've been waiting for it. I actually ordered a few other things as well. So here it is. Right. These are the three things that I've ordered. <laughs> they look absolutely brilliant, don't they? Yeah. That is scabby and for brewing kombucha. Milk kefir. Uh, it's they actually look like little rice grains and milk. Mm. But um, apparently the kombucha takes a week or so to actually brew out, but the milk kefir, a couple of days. Uh, this is a sourdough mixture. Now I did have mine for quite some time. Um, mine was done from scratch and but when I had my operation, I wasn't getting around the house very well, and so I did as little, least, you know, as little as possible. So one of the things that I didn't do was use or feed my sourdough starter. So my sourdough starter died, basically. Uh, didn't have a funeral for it, but it died. So when I saw this um, offer, I thought, yeah, I'll actually buy a starter that's already going and add to it and start my sourdough bread again. And because I've never done it from a bought starter, I've always made my own starter. Um, the first time I made it was with um, pineapple juice and feeding it daily and that. Uh, I had that for a couple of years. Then um, I had my first knee operation and couldn't go around much. It died because I didn't feed it. I started another one up and I started that just a pinch of um, actual dry drip yeast rather than going for the pineapple uh, juice and then obviously that one died uh, when I had my second need operation so I'm trying to bought starter <laughs> see if it makes any difference taste wise don't know right now with all these They've sent instructions through. Now I've been watching different YouTube channels and researching this uh, to find out how other people do it. Uh, but the people I've ordered to have also sent me instructions for all of them. So I'll be going through these. Um, doesn't say on here where I got it from but I have been buying different things um, 
organic is supposed to be the the best uh, one for it and filtered water for the um, scabby kombucha now i haven't got a water filter or anything so i bought bottles of still spring water so i'll be using them uh, i bought green tea uh, organic green tea but could I find any organic cane sugar? I couldn't. Um, so what I'm actually going to use in the kombucha is I have got some molasses cane sugar. Yeah, natural unrefined cane sugar. So, uh, it doesn't say organic on it, but it's unrefined. So I'm assuming that will uh, do good for it. It's very dark. So actually my kombucha should brew out quite dark using this. But we'll see. <laughs> uh, so that'll be for the kombucha. I bought some organic milk for because I don't go through milk apart from um, yogurt. I make my own yogurt. Normally, I just buy the the normal whole milk. Um, but what I'll actually be doing is I bought some organic whole milk. And how much is in here? Oh, can't use a liter. How much is in here? Oh, two liters. Two liters. So I won't be using all this. So I can make a batch of yogurt um, rather than it going off. I'll I'll get a batch of yogurt and uh, two batches. I should imagine, possibly one, of the um, kaffir milk. So that's for that. Right, I've read the in the destructions, and I'm going to do the milk cafe first. Now it says to jar add two teaspoons, which apparently is what's in here, and I can't get it. Open. Oh, have ripped the bag. Uh, it doesn't say anything about sterilising your, your right. jars or anything. Just give them a good clean. So that's all I have done. Um, but it says put the contents of this bag which is about two teaspoons teaspoons two spoons whether that's tablespoons dessert spoons teaspoons or what I don't know but the contents of the bag that's that in then add your milk And they recommend doing half a litre, so that's what's in there. You can add a little cream if you want a, a thicker consistency. You know, I've got no cream, so tough. And it doesn't say anything about stirring. Hmm. It just says cover the jar with a lid and set it out on the counter or in a cupboard so, but don't put it in the fridge for anywhere from 48 hours what I've been um, learning it's less time than that but obviously with this being a new one that's why it's taking going to take a bit longer um, 
The kaffir grains will culture the milk. It cultures faster in a warm kitchen rather than a cold one. You will know when it's ready because it will start to look thick and clumpy. The longer you leave it out, the more tangy and cultured it will become. So, there we are. That's that. I will find it. I'll find a place for it now. And then I'll do the next one. See you in a minute. I apologise for any noise. Um, voices, comments or anything like that. Uh, coming from the living room, uh, Lurch and his son and my son are playing with his... Is it the Vive or the Rift? Vive. Are playing with the Vive and uh, they are killing zombies at the moment. Now the sourdough. Right, it doesn't give many instructions on there, but uh, as I've told you before, I have done a sourdough star starter before, so I'll let you know how I've done it in the past. This is strong bread flour. I'm going to use this measure all the time. And it's basically the same amount water to flour. So there goes the flour. I normally have used normal tap water, but it does say in the instructions better to use like some spring water, filtered water in that. And since I've got it in now for the kombucha, I'll do it for the sourdough. So there's the same amount of water as flour. Now, it doesn't like metal. Uh, none of these things do. And metal isn't good for your jars because you might crack them and everything. So just give it a stir round. And there doesn't appear to be that much, but I won't be feeding it every day for about a week until it's got enough in there I can start using. So there's that. Let's get the sourdough started. Trying to make sure I get all of this out. Give it a quick stir. Because I'll need to cover me kombucha, um, not with the lid, and I will also need to cover the sourdough, not with a lid, I've got these muslin squares. They look like handkerchiefs, but they're muslin squares. And one's too big. As you can see, it's going to be too big for the jar. So I'm going to cut it in four. That way, I'll always have two to wash and two 
still on the jaws and just it looks pitiful in there only a little bit but it'll keep growing each day I'll feed it and it'll grow but the muslin square can go over it find an elastic band that's big enough because apparently both the sourdough starter and the kombucha attract fruit flies like mad and uh, I do know the sourdough does I'll take the lids off these jars so I can hook underneath and this way it means it can breathe because the muslin has, muslin has got little holes and everything in it so the sourdough can breathe but fruit flies can't get at it uh, according to the instructions for the kombucha we've got to basically make a sweet tea uh, now as I said I haven't got a water filter or anything so I've bought some still water from Morrison's and uh, that shouldn't have like fluoride in all the rest of uh, it recommends first time normally you would make two litres but first time make um, one litre so this is a two litre bottle I'm just going to shove in about half of it uh, and bring it to the boil right, the water's now boiled so it says add four tea bags and between 80 and 100 grams of sugar so there's 90 and I'll give it a stir round to try and dissolve it once the sugar's dissolved according to the instructions it says wait half an hour to let it steep so that's what I'm going to do it's had its half an hour cooling down it says take the tea bags out I've got clean hands I've just washed them And the tea bags and then compost because they should be good for the compost. And now probably gonna get this absolutely everywhere, but oh no, there we are. Now it says leave it to cool because it, it is still warm so we'll leave it to cool and then I'll float my scrubby. See you in a minute. Hello. The tea has now cooled down um, so it says I just gave me. So here it goes. Plop. And cover. Sorry about that, I forgot to put the light on earlier. <laughs> and there it is. It's all nicely covered now. Now where does it say keep it? Well, apparently, although that was more or less a square scoby, it will either sit in the middle or in the bottom of it, but it will make a new scoby across the top. 
so it'll actually be the size of this jar uh, so I'm doing a one litre batch this time next time I'll either do a one or a two litre batch depending on how big my scabies is yeah, it'll take about two weeks Find a spot for your container. There should be somewhere out of direct sunlight, but in a room where there is light. Well, it boy the room needs to be relative balanced temperature. Right, so what I think I'll do is I will keep it up there because Everything else is out of direct sunlight. There's me milk out of direct sunlight. Me sourdough. And now my kombucha. I'll show you those. All three of them there. Mix eggs. So that's the milk, milk kefir, I'll show you that when I think it's ready. Uh, the sourdough, I'll make something with it and video it. Bread, cakes, whatever. Might even try a naan with it, mmm, naan breads. And that's my uh, kombucha. So, that's a start. Thank you. Bye. It's a perfect situation. It's when the bad news bears on me a bag of temptation. It's what a perfect. Situation.